In today's video, my friends, I'm going to be giving you the very best TV settings for your LG C2 when playing the PS5. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So you've got your shiny new LG C2 and you've got your PS5 and now you want the best TV settings for it. Well, in this video, we'll go through the best TV settings, in my opinion, for SDR and HDR content. Now, this is just my opinion. It can get quite confusing, guys, so I have left all of these settings in the description as well and also in the pinned comments. But let's get started. So I'm going to be doing this from a clean install of the operating system and there's a couple of things that we need to switch between the PS5 and on the TV because there are some things which they will conflict with each other if you don't change certain settings. And we'll go straight into the PS5 and change one of the settings there. Now the thing that we're going to change is in the screen and video section and this is the HDR where it says at the moment always on which yours may or may not say we're going to change that to when supported and that means if it is an HDR game it will play it in HDR and if it's not it will play it in SDR and that way you get far more accurate colours for whichever type of game you're playing. Now, if you look at this example in Fortnite, which is an SDR game, on the left, HDR on the PS5 has been set to Always On, and on the right, it's set to When Supported. And you can see that there's far more detail in the one on the right. And that's because the TV is almost trying to force something upon the game, which isn't designed to happen. Now, I don't know exactly what the technical thing is going on here, but as you can see, the HDR is definitely pumping more light in and therefore losing some of that detail. And it's just not creating the image that was intended in the SDR mode. One more thing just to double check is to make sure that you're in the right picture mode and you haven't gone into eco by mistake. Now with the C2 you should default into game optimizer mode instead of eco mode which you did with the C1. So if you're doing this on the C1 that's absolutely fine. Just quickly go to the picture mode and make sure it's not in eco. Now the best way of doing that and making sure it doesn't default back to eco is to go into the general settings then into OLED care then go down to device self care and then go into energy saving and make sure you then click off or turn off the energy saving mode. Just click it to off and then you won't default back into eco mode at any time. Eco mode just doesn't do anything for the brightness or the colors of this TV. Okay, so let's now go in and change some of these SDR settings. And we're going to do that by double checking we're in game optimizer mode and then going to advanced settings. The first thing that we're going to click on is brightness and then go into OLED pixel brightness. Here it's set to 90 as default, but that's too high. I think that the ideal range is somewhere between 70 and 80. Preferred choice for me is 80, but I know some people that have it on 70. There is no right or wrong. Just go with whatever you prefer. And you can always come back and change this afterwards. Okay, next we're going to leave adjust contrast and also black level. They're fine at 85 and at 50. And we're now going to go into gamma and we're going to change that to BT1886. And immediately you saw a change there where the contrast just improved and it definitely looked better. And that one will be the most consistently good for most games. Okay, next, if you go into color, then I don't change anything in color depth. I leave that at 55, and also I leave tint at zero and color gamut auto detect. Okay, so now you need to go down to white balance, and then when in here, you need to click on color temperature. And you'll be presented with a slider that looks like it's grayed out, but it's not. Just click on that, and then you'll be able to drag it right the way down the bottom, and you'll see that the picture gets a lot warmer. What you'll notice that this just gives you much more accurate color and also it does improve the grayscale. Now there's just one more thing that you need to do in the SDR side and that's come out of there and then come out of the color and go down into clarity. And once you're in clarity, then go into sharpness and you need to adjust this and basically just turn it off, take it right down to zero. And effectively what this will do is stop the TV conflicting with the PS5 and where you sometimes get lines around objects, that will then not happen as much. Okay, now we're going to go in and change the settings on the HDR side. But firstly, I just want to say um, there's some great channels out there where you can learn an awful lot. Vincent, obviously, is the go-to guy for the technical knowledge of all of these different TV settings and things. What he doesn't know or what he's forgotten is more than what most people know. And he's at HD TV Test, so be sure to check him out. Also, people like Brian at Whisper Status 74, a really informative channel and has a lot of great content within the industry 
and has a great relationship with Value Electronics, which is an American firm where they get in all the big top TVs. And again, knowledge is key there. And there's people like Stop the FOMO as well, which again, you can learn a lot from. Right, I've gone into Dirt 5, which is a really good HDR game. It really does give an incredible picture. And we go in and make sure we're in Game Optimizer. Once we, we've got that confirmed, we go to Advanced Settings. And again, we're just going to go in and change some of the settings similar to what we did last time. Now, the first difference is going to be that on brightness, we're not going to change any of the top settings. We want the pixel brightness to be at its maximum. We also want the contrast to be at its maximum. And black level, we want to stay at 50. The one thing that we will go down and change, though, is the dynamic tone mapping. Now, Vincent did explain this incredibly well on a video that he did, and it effectively means that the console won't conflict with the TV. You're not getting effectively double tone mapping happening if you have this turned on. Now, as well as giving you the ability to not have the double tone mapping, HDIG being set to that will also mean that if the game supports HDIG, or you've got a game that has got an internal brightness slider and you can set it to a figure that you're happy with, the TV won't override that. So it will be done within the game and it won't then have that layered effect, which again would just mean that the HDR is not going to be as effective and it's just not going to look as good or as it should. Now, if you're asking, yes, I did test this theory and he is right and it definitely is worth putting it into HGIG. Certainly I played this Dirt 5 and I had the, the issue where it just didn't look as good. The HDR just wasn't as dynamic and also in other games as well, it was exactly the same. So yes, this definitely works better being in HGIG. Okay, so you'll notice underneath peak brightness and gamma are greyed out. Leave video range and motion eye care to off and video range to auto. Okay, go down to color now and color depth again. We just leave that at 55. You don't need to make any changes there at all. And exactly the same with tint, just leave that at zero. Same with color gamut. But again, with white balance, we're going to do exactly the same as what we did on the SDR setting. We're going to take that right down to the bottom and set that to warm 50. Okay, and finally, go out of there, go back into Clarity, and then go to Adjust Sharpness, and then take the sharpness right down to zero, like you did in the SDR section. And that's it. That's everything done on the TV. Now, there's just one final step, and that is to go in and configure the HDR setting within the actual console. Okay, so from your main console dashboard, just go into the Settings screen, and then head down to Screen and Video and then go down to Adjust HDR. So then go in and adjust the slider like you would do normally until you can just about see it. But what you're doing now, obviously, is changing it after the TV settings are in the correct position rather than before when they weren't. So hopefully it will be even more accurate. And that's it, guys. That is my advice, which I've picked up from these other great channels over the years about how you can get the very best settings for your PS5 with the incredible LG C range. And this will work with some of the other LG OLEDs as well, where they've got these features, it will work exactly the same. So if you've got a C1, C10, then that will be fine. And also on the B range or even the G range as well. I can't imagine it being that much difference. So thank you to those other channels. Thank you for how you've helped me learn over the years and also guys you check them out for yourselves because they will teach you more as well thanks for you to watch for watching this video and i look forward to seeing you on the next when we'll be comparing the 48 inch c2 with the 55 inch c2 i'll see you then